I think we'll get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for all of you for being here. Thank you to the media, members of the media for being here. Really appreciate it. My name is Jeff Bickford. That's G-E-O-F-F-B-I-C-K-F-O-R-D. I'm the executive director of the Maine Gun Safety Coalition. Uh, following the massacre at Sandy Hook, uh, the Maine Gun Safety Coalition gave Susan Collins, Senator Susan Collins, whose office we stand before today, the, our Buzz Fitzgerald Award uh, for one of the most outstanding gun safety leaders of that year. We gave her that award because she supported what was then called the Manchin-Toomey Bill that had worked its way through the Senate as a response to the Sandy Hook Massacre. And that bill closed, or sought to close, the dangerous gun show loophole and background, background check loophole that we have across the country and that we still have here in Maine. And that meant that anyone could go to a gun store, a gun show, excuse me, or uh, purchase a gun through an advertised sale like in Uncle Henry's without a background check. And it was perfectly legal. And we know for a fact that those transactions have led to prohibited people, people with felony records, domestic abusers, have led to them getting firearms here in Maine and across the country. And that's why it was so important for Senator Collins to support that legislation. It passed through the Senate, it didn't make it out of the House. Here we are again, asking Senator Collins to do just that, to maintain her position as a gun safety advocate for common sense, bipartisan, life-saving gun safety legislation. Senator Collins has a unique position as a member of the bipartisan group of senators negotiating a bill right now, or packages of bills, that will address gun safety in the wake of the tragedies in Buffalo and in Texas and in our ongoing gun safety crisis in this country where we lose over 40,000 Americans a year, every year, to gun violence. So we are here today to ask Senator Collins to continue on her path of being a advocate for those common sense gun safety pieces of legislation like universal background checks in her role in this negotiating group. Today we're asking her to do four things in her role as a member of this committee and as a senator. One, don't walk away until we have a deal. We cannot have another mass shooting, another slaughter of innocent, beautiful little children at their desks and not do something again. So don't walk away from the negotiations, from the bipartisan work working group until we have a uh, agreement on a package of gun safety legislation. And then we're asking as a part of that, that at least th three things be included in that. One, a background, universal background check uh, law like she supported with Manchin Toomey. Two, safe storage law like we have here in Maine that was, became law this past fall that says if you have a child in the home, you cannot leave a loaded firearm unsecured in their presence. Simple. This is Gun Safety 101. We have it here in Maine. At the federal level, it's called Ethan's Law. Senator Collins, please support Ethan's Law. And three, we're asking Senator Collins to support a some package or some law that increases and uh, makes sure that all states can have access to red flag laws, to a real red flag law that allows loved ones to uh, seek a temporary court order um, removing firearms from the presence of someone they love who is in a period of crisis. These are three simple, basic asks beyond the, our general ask that she remain at the table until the deal is met. Uh, we are confident that as a gun safety leader that we have rewarded in the past and acknowledged her for her work, that she will continue to work in good faith in this group to get something across to save the lives of Mainers and Americans and we thank her for being at that table and we ask her to heed our call. Um, our next speaker up will be Stella Crawford. Hello, I'm Stella Crawford. I'm a junior in high school and I'm 17 years old. Um, last week I organized a walk out of school trying to get the point across that safety is critical. We do not want to be here, but we will be and we will stay here until we see change. We need the promise of safety in our future. When I did the 
walk out, it was to deliver a letter to Senator Collins, and I'm going to read that letter. Dear Senator Collins, as students in your state who go to school every day scared for our safety, and as soon to be voters, we're delivering a message of compromise. We're not asking for total gun reform, but we're demanding a ban of assault weapons, as defined by the now defunct federal assault weapon ban. Because in the last five months we've had to hear about 30 school shootings nationally, because we should be worried about our grades and our social lives, not an exit strategy in case of an active shooter. Because our First Amendment to life should be more important than our Second Amendment right to own an assault weapon. Because the adults in our lives have failed us and now we need to fight for our own safety. Because it is unethical that you have taken money from the NRA and prioritized their wants over our lives. Because mental health is an issue all over the world, but no students in any other countries in the world worry about dying by bullets in schools like we do. Because your red flag laws wouldn't have prevented the last two school shootings because the shooters hadn't been deemed mentally ill. Red flag laws aren't enough. Because our parents don't want to hear your thoughts and prayers when our lives are lost. Because it shouldn't be that gun violence is the leading cause of death among children and teens. We want to learn and live without fear. We demand you advocate for the children of your state rather than your donors and your party. We don't want compromise. We're dem demanding change. Thank you. Up next is Sydney Ward from March for Our Life, Portland, Maine. Hi, my name is Sydney Wolf, S-Y-D-N-E-Y-W-O-L-F, and I am one of the organizers of the March for Our Lives, Portland, Maine. Um, this march was organized by three social workers. Uh, two of us are recent graduates of the University of New England, um, and we are incredibly passionate about making our school and our world a safer place. Um, I am a native Buffalonian. I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. Um, and waking up one day in Portland, Maine, and seeing that the, the headline for that day was that there was another tragedy, um, and that it happened in my hometown was heartbreaking, and it was devastating, and it should not be happening anymore. Um, so, Senator Collins, I am calling on you to take action today um, to keep not only our kids safe, but our world safe from guns. James, LaPlante. Hello, I'm James LaPlante, J-A-M-E-S-L-A-P-L-A-N-T-E. -E. I'm a citizen of South Portland, Maine. Um, I would like to speak directly to Senator Collins uh, with my personal experience with gun violence in the state of Maine. Um, and the ineffectiveness of Maine's yellow flag law, which Senator Collins is now touting as a model for a national law to help prevent gun violence. The yellow flag law is worthless, it is useless, and it is, does not do anything to prevent gun violence in Maine. I know this because in the year 2020 in September, my brother took his own life with a handgun. He purchased this handgun legally, he purchased automatic weapons, semi-automatic assault rifles, shotguns, and thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition, all legally, even though he is diagnosed with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, even though he has been hospitalized multiple times, none of that stopped. There were no background checks to stop him. The yellow flag law was ineffective. I called the police specifically asking what could be done because I knew the stockpile of weapons that he had in the house, and I was fearful that he was going to take his life or that he was going to shoot up the local shopping center where he was convinced people were spreading rumors about him. Something could have happened much worse than what did. And when I talked to the police, they told me there's nothing they could do. They can't do anything until he breaks the law or till he is involuntarily hospitalized. And hospitals will not touch this with a 10-foot pole. A hospital will not effectively utilize the yellow flag law out of fear of retribution of the people who have guns. So the yellow flag law is worthless. Senator Collins, we need a true red flag law. We need a law where my voice could have gone to a judge and could have taken his weapons away before he took his own life. That's right. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story and thank you for uh, everybody that spoke before me and for everybody that is here today. My name is Lori Gramlich and I represent Old Orchard Beach in the state legislature. We are painfully aware that gun violence in our country is of epidemic proportions. As policymakers, we rely on data to inform our decisions, especially when it comes to public health. 
but we have not had the mechanisms to gather data that is comprehensive and available to the public in one place on firearm injuries and deaths in our state. We have had to rely on antidotes, headlines, and fragmented information instead. That is why I introduced legislation which requires the Maine CDC to release annually public health data regarding firearm fatalities in Maine, and I am pleased today to say that that bill is now law. Human Services released its first annual report and we can now have informed conversations about how to save lives. According to the report, there were 154 firearm deaths in Maine in 2020. The report also highlighted an additional 39 firearm related hospitalizations did, that did not result in death. Deaths by suicide accounted for roughly 86 percent or 132 of all the firearm deaths reported. And nearly 90% of those were males. Males being over the age of 45. You know, we often hear in Maine that we don't have a problem with gun deaths. But this report clearly indicates otherwise. Gun deaths include suicides as well as homicides. And this data shows that we in Maine are experiencing rates of suicide using firearms above the national average. As a state representative and longtime social worker, Strengthening our mental health system has been a top priority for me. For decades, the mental health system in Maine has been increasingly fractured and underfunded, which has meant too many Mainers struggle with mental and behavioral health care issues because they cannot access the care they need. To me, the numbers in this report make it clear that we have a public health crisis that is resulting in scores of firearm-related deaths each year. The time is now to pass sensible gun legislation aimed at keeping people safe. While states will continue to work towards implementing common sense safety bills, we also must continue to urge Senator Susan Collins to stay at the table, to support universal background checks, to support funding for a national red flag law so that mental health providers, courts, hospitals, and law enforcement have the resources they need to protect the public from those who may have access to firearms, who are a threat to themselves or others, and finally, for Susan Collins to support safe storage legislation similar to what we passed in the state of Maine by a bill sponsored by our own representative Vicki Dudera. <laughs> Let's make sure that these alarming numbers identified in this first annual report from the department decrease. Let's make sure we save lives. The time is now. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ann Carney. I'm a state senator. I represent South Portland, Cape Elizabeth, and a little bit of Scarborough. And I'm here today because gun violence affects every single one of us. When assault weapons are freely available, it impacts each of us in our everyday lives. We can't go to school without being in danger. We can't go to work. Our places of worship our grocery stores, even our doctor's offices where we go to get health care, all put us in risk of gun violence. And I'm here today to say to Senator Collins, today we marched to save our lives, and Senator Collins, it's your turn to vote to save our lives. My name is Lois Reckitt, R-E-C-K-I-T-T. -T. I'm the uh, State House Representative for the Ocean End of South Portland. In 2000, I was one of the founding board members of Maine Citizens Against Handgun Violence, which has now morphed into the Maine Gun Safety Coalition. So I worked for about 15 years on that board and worked as hard as I could to try to bring gun safety laws to this state but I wasn't in a place where I had any agency myself, so what the heck, I ran for the legislature uh, and started to put in bills that I had been trying to get other people to put in prior to that. Now, the results were about the same, which is we've had uh, some minor victories, uh, sub sub substantive, but minor really in the great picture, uh, victories in the House. When I was, uh, before I came, uh, became a representative, 
I worked hard for the uh, universal background checks, for assault weapons bans, high capacity magazine bans, for the ghost gun bans. Uh, my memories are mostly of sitting in the Civic Center with three of us at a table and hundreds of uh, gun enthusiasts behind us as we testified, the three of us, about background checks. It was a very nervous day. Uh, I think that I have uh, spent my life being uh, quite nervous about guns anyway because I got shot right here when I was a kid by a BB gun and almost lost my vision. So I've never been a big gun fan, I confess to that. Uh, however, I am uh, sure that there are many people in the state who are responsible gun owners and who are with us on things like universal background checks. I know that from the, from the polling data. Uh, the other piece that I want to say today is I know that uh, Senator Collins has been an ally occasionally on this issue, and I hope that she stays at the table with this uh, group that's negotiating in the Senate. But I have to tell you that the, whatever comes out of the Senate is not going to be as strong as what's already been passed in the House. And that's extraordinarily unfortunate in my view. Uh, I've heard talk of uh, people talking about having assault weapons bans for people 18 to 21. We could have bigger than that. I think it's really important uh, that we consider what can save the most people. One last thing. Um, Gun violence uh, has struck my extended family pretty heavily in the last couple of years. Plus four people to suicides in my family. I can't even believe it. Uh, you know, it was such a shock each and every time. And I don't know that, because I don't live anywhere near these people in my extended family, so I don't know if I could have seen signs and used a red flag law, but somebody might have been able to. And I concur with what was said by some others. The red flag law is the only possibility of us actually having people be able to make a difference in time. The thing we passed last year, the yellow flag thing, not really worth the paper it's written on in my view. But the red flag law can help, and I think we have to try it. So I plead with Senator Collins to pursue that on the federal level, along with background checks, and trying to do something about assault weapons ban. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Maura Pillsbury. I'm a Moms Demand Action Maine volunteer. In the wake of more mass shootings and gun violence that ravages our country every day, we hear the same thoughts and prayers over and over again, but it doesn't save lives and it doesn't change laws. Ultimately, it all leads to the same thing, lives lost at the hands of preventable gun violence. We don't need more thoughts and prayers. We need action. We demand action. The Senate has failed to do its job for decades. What will finally convince them to act? How many more children have to die? How many more parents, teachers, and churchgoers' lives must be taken for our leaders to do something? Why aren't they protecting our constitutional rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? We have a right to live without fear of gun violence, scared that our communities will be in the headlines next. This fear is taking an unfathomable toll on the mental and emotional health of our children and our communities. As a mother and a school board member, I hear about this fear from parents all the time. I have conversations how to keep our schools safe, whether we need bulletproof glass, whether our children need to be taught how to hide under their desks and barricade their doors. After two years of the mental and emotional toll of COVID, we cannot continue to subject our children to this trauma when we know there are solutions. Any senator who remains hostage to the gun lobby, who blocks life-saving change, is choosing gun industry profits and their own political aspirations over the lives of our children. The Senate must take action. Our children and communities deserve so much better than this. We don't need leaders who make excuses. We need leaders who will take bold action and save us through this crisis, from this crisis. Our message is simple. Don't look away from our gun, country's gun violence crisis. Do your jobs. Hello, my name is Margaret Groban and I'm a former federal prosecutor and one message I'd like to give Senator Collins is that one thing we hear is that if we would just use all the gun laws at our uh, disposal, um, we would be able to stop gun violence and nothing is farther from the truth. We can't prosecute our way out of this problem. What we can do is bring together a number of common sense proposals like the ones that are currently being debated in the Senate. Uh, do not let perfect be the enemy of the good. 
Let's get what we can. Every little bit helps. And I hope that Senator Collins hears that message and hears us today. Thank you. Hi, my name's Karen Luthi, K-A-R-I-N, <laughs> not that kind of Karen, L-E-U-T-H-Y. Uh, I'm the founder of Suit Up Maine, and um, we've been working on this issue for a long time with these friends here, and um, we've also been asking Susan Collins to move the needle on this for a very long time. And um, to be honest, I'm very cynical. I'm very cynical. And so are the thousands of Mainers that are a part of our forum. They tell us, you know, don't bother, or it's like beating a dead horse, or good luck with that. And, um, you know, I get that. I really do. One of the things that we do at Suit Up Maine is we count votes and we check records. We do that research so that other people don't have to do such a heavy lift. And, um, you know, Susan Collins has said, over the years, um, she wants to get things done. She has said that she supports uh, background checks sometimes, and she says that she supports safe storage sometimes, but she's voted both ways on almost everything. And the fact is that Susan Collins has not taken a single vote in all of her 25 years in the Senate that caused a new gun safety law to pass or improved a gun safety law. So in 25 years, she has not cast a single vote that has led to a new gun safety law or an improved gun safety law. So that's what matters here, right? Yep. <laughs> so um, the other part of that voting record is what she did do. So. She did actually cast a vote that made gun manufacturers um, immune from liability. She did do that. And she also um, voted to repeal a rule that would have prevented people, some people with very, very serious mental illness from being able to buy a gun. That was an Obama era rule, and she helped repeal it. So, um, that's why I'm cynical. <laughs> um, and honestly, you know, none of us should have to be here. Like, it's graduation weekend. We should be doing those things with our kids. Um, and, you know, Susan Collins knows that gun violence is the number one killer of kids in America. She knows it. Gun violence is the number one killer of kids in America. That should be enough, shouldn't it? Shouldn't, shouldn't yes. it? Any normal person who heard that would be like, okay, public health crisis, let's do it right now, just like we did with the pandemic, right? It's no different. Um, she also knows how we feel about it. She knows that the vast majority of Americans, the majority of gun owners, support common sense gun legislation. She knows that up to 90% of people support um, background checks, universal background checks. You know what else 90% of Americans support? Social security, <laughs> the postal service, um, ice cream. <laughs> For real, right? So, you know, it shouldn't be that, it shouldn't be that hard. Um, We've, you know, you guys have done your jobs. You have done your job. These legislators have done their job. But the Senate has not done its job. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not here to tell Susan Collins why we need universal background checks, safe storage laws, magazine um, size reductions, any of those things. She knows all the reasons why. I am here to stand up for the nearly one mil, actually it's probably over a million. I'm here to stand up for the one million and more people that have died from gun violence in the 25 years that Susan Collins has been in office. 200,000 of those are kids. 
That's why I'm here. So I stand up for them, we stand up for them, and we need Susan Collins to stand up for them. So, you know, I'm still cynical, obviously, still cynical, but I am ready, so, so ready to be proven wrong on this. Prove me wrong, Susan Collins, prove me wrong. Get 10 of your Republican friends to vote for this bill when it comes out of this committee and do it. Get the job done. Thank you. My name is Cam Shannon, and I'm the chair of the Maine Gun Safety Coalition. I am also the mother of three children, a 13-year-old daughter, an 11-year-old son, and a five-year-old daughter. And excuse me if I get teary. By now, those of us who can bear to listen to accounts or read reports of the school shooting in Uvalde have heard about the mother who ran into the school to save her children. When she heard there was an active shooter situation that was taking place in her children's school, she drove at 100 miles per hour to get there. Police urged her to cooperate, to stand back, but ultimately they allowed her into the school. She ran to one of her children's classrooms and told her child's teacher that it was safe to take the children out of the school. Knowing, and this, okay, knowing that one child was safe she ran to her other child's classroom. Her child's teacher was too afraid to open the door. Police, a policeman started to escort her from the school, and it was only as she turned back and saw another policeman opening her child's door that she saw her child, grabbed her child, and brought her child to safety, all while hearing gunfire. So this is what I have to say, no matter the risk and no matter the cost, every parent I've spoken to has said they would enter the school. They would enter the school even if they couldn't bring their child out, even if they were just entering to hold their child in the last moments of life. So the child would not die alone. We parents can lift cars to save our children, and we can risk our lives to save theirs because to us, their lives are more important than our own. So today, lifting the car or running into the school means standing here. It looks like this. It looks like all of us here standing outside Susan Collins' office and begging her to do her part. We know school shootings and mass shootings are the most talked of gun tragedies. They get the most press. But there are many other gun tragedies that occur every day. Children injured or killed due to accidental discharge, depressed teenagers taking their own lives, and victims of domestic violence killed by firearms. All of these terrible tragedies can and should have been prevented. We have lost too many lives to gun violence. So we are here today to ask Susan Collins to do her part in passing reasonable gun legislation. We want universal uh, background checks. We no longer want guns in the hands of those legally barred from having them. We want a red flag law. We want to be able to temporarily remove guns from people who pose harm to themselves or others. And we want a federal safe storage law akin to the one we passed in Maine this past legislative season session that requires guns to be stored safely in homes that children frequent. We don't want any more children to die of accidental discharge.
I want to thank everybody for being here and for all of our speakers for sending our plea to Senator Collins. This event has been organized by the Maine Gun Safety Coalition, March for Our Lives of Portland, Maine, Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in Maine, and Suit Up Maine. And I thank them so much for being here with us today. There was a report the other day in the newspaper that Senator Collins, along with Senator King, supported a policy that would raise the age to purchase a, purchase a long gun or an assault rifle to 21. From 18. What that tells me is that Senator Collins knows that this is an issue and that there is a federal legislative fix. And it's clear from her position that she cares about this issue and unlike many of her Republican colleagues, she wants to get something done to save lives. So we have all gathered here today again to ask Susan Collins, Senator Collins, before whose office we stand, to hear our plea. Don't leave the table until we have a deal on gun safety legislation. Support a bill that would mandate universal background checks. Support Ethan's Law mandating safe storage of firearms that are loaded in the presence of a child and support a true red flag law that will save lives in Maine and across the country. Thank you so much.